Good morning, it's National Donut Day. Welcome to Coffee Walk. Nothing goes better with coffee than donuts. Let's go and see what's going on in the shop. So since it's National Donut Day, the first 10 people that send us a video doing a donut in their car, not somebody else doing it, we're gonna send you a signed F40 poster. I'll put thanks for the nice donut. Now, to be fair to those people in the office today that are watching this, won't be able to get there quickly to do a donut in their car. Get in your office chair, have somebody help you do a donut, that'll qualify. So we got these from O Donut, which is our favorite donut place around. My favorite donut place I've ever seen or favorite sign, and if you've seen one that's funny, let me know, was a place called Average Donut. That explains it all. So what we're going to look at today, what's going on in the shop, is a continuation of a few things. And uh, something that you're hoping for that you're not going to see, we're going to push the F650 drive and the Hellwagon drive to next week. Sorry about that. And these first two bays that we just walked through here, we have got two 2019 JLURs, which are the Rubicon models. These are both being built into stage threes. So what you get on a stage three is you get a four inch suspension lift, 17 by nine inch Ruby nine wheels, 37 inch tires, heat reduction hood, stage three bumper, 8,000 pound winch, LED lights. But go to our website, you see the different stage one, twos, and threes, and look at, for all the other licensees and builders and distributors. We have 11 of them now. They can build these Jeeps and service them for you, whether it's a 2007 to 18 JK or the new JLU with Black Mountain parts. Damn, they look good. This is the one I want right here, but I bet you somebody takes it first. It's awfully quiet in here. Morning, guys. It's National Donut Day. Here you go, Alex. Alex is kind of hard selling donuts these days because he's watching his weight. Connor's an easy sell because he's not watching his weight. He is the king of soda pop here at Carlos Butters, down in almost one an hour. Almost more than me and David, he's just kind of shy, but thank you, thank you. I imagine he could take two. I'll take two. Outstanding. Two. So we're going to head to the body shop. What are you doing this one, David? Is he getting a motor? I'm just doing fixing all the leaks, case. Uh, fixing the oil leaks in the oil pan. Deals. Well, you know it's kind of hard to do because all Jeeps leak, right? Yeah. Okay, well, good luck with that. Grand Wagoneer, we've got the entire rocker in on the driver's side. We've got the rear quarter on it. Rear quarter patches on this side. Now, we had to do a whole bunch of work on the inside of this to do a partial wheelhouse. And... We had to replace this section of the floor and the entire rocker. So the rocker's not put on yet. It's cut out and we've got it set up to go in. We actually drilled these in every spot where all the factory spot welds were and spot weld them back where they were and you can't tell we did it just like when we do a CJ. No, we're not going full blown into Bronco restoration, but what happens, you get one in, the other ones just start coming. I don't know what it is, kind of like the Pied Piper deal, but this one's worth looking at. This is a 1977 Bronco. This is the last year they produced this generation Bronco. What's really neat about this is it came out of New Mexico. It's one owner from new. It has no rust, original paint, 302, power steering, power brake automatic. Now this Jeep, this Bronco, pardon the pun, Jeep, wasn't even a pun, I just say Jeep all the time. What's really incredible about this Bronco being original paint is I think we're going to leave it original paint. The patina thing is really cool and it's here to stay. I think what we're going to do is just clear coat over this. I think you'd be surprised at how good it looks. It's just so straight and so honest. We're going to clean up the interior, put a new dash pad in it, get it running and driving. It's also a really nicely optioned one. It's hard top, 302 power steering, power brakes, automatic. What is really neat to see about this is it's uncut, which means the wheel wheels have not been cut for bigger wheels and tires and had the plastic flares put on them. Now here's our major restoration Bronco project. It's going really well, 1969. We've got all the floors in it. We've got the doors fitted. We've got the striker plates in it. Quarter panels. Rear tail panel. And we've got the tailgate fitted. So we've got really nice panel gaps. Um, I'd be willing to bet that the panel gaps are as good or better than that one that hasn't been touched. So we're making really good progress on this. We put another, I looked at the paperwork, this week in this truck, about 70 hours in it between two guys. So next time you see this, this body will be back off 
it'll be going on its original chassis, which is almost done. Let's go check it out. We'll find something clean to put a donut on for these guys when they get back, so they'll be disappointed they didn't get one. You want another donut, Alex? So we have started building the chassis. We got the lift kit on it, with the exception of the rear leaf springs. Those are on back order, unfortunately. Front and rear diffs are done. Power steering box. So this is coming along. What's nice about being this far ahead of the game is when these guys are ready for the chassis to put the body on it, chassis ready, body gone there, we'll go from there. What's nice about these, the Bronco build we're doing is the bottom of it is gonna be spray lined. It's not gonna be painted. So once we get that all lined up properly, we'll spray line the engine bay and the bottom of it and get it on here. They can do the final body work and get it in the paint booth. National Donut Day, remember, send us a video. Have a great day. I got the good one.